Welcome back to our community. Always educational and always so good to visit with Cindy Petiti from Anthony Petiti Garden Center as we're getting ready for fall and fall planting. Fall planting, And taking care of all of our plants that are already there Mm -hmm. over the fall. We haven't talked about holly. Holly's another one that used to take so much time. We spoke about the roses and how much time those Mm -hmm. used to take. But holly, where you'd have a male and a female, and you have to make sure it was all together. and weren't too far apart so you could get berries. Yes. Actually, um, the holly has come a long way. There is a royal family holly that's been hybridized, and it has both at the same time. So you can actually have the royal family you'll have flowers on part of the plant and berries on part of the plant all at the same time so at christmas time you're able to trim those off and you don't have to worry about it exactly i tell everyone don't trim your hollies until you're ready to decorate your house for the holidays yeah you know and use it and there is a product um called wilt stop or wilt proof two different companies they the same product though Mm -hmm. you spray your cuttings if you're doing holly or boxwood or if you're trimming your cypress or your arborvita any of those that you trim for holiday decorating spray them with the wilt stop and you will not believe it just locks in their moisture and they don't dry out near as quickly it's also is a safer way because you know they become a fire hazard in in your house when they get so dry and it it stops that that drying out so it really makes them last you can cut in november when you get ready to start you know the end of november Mm -hmm. start putting up your your holiday decoration and you they will be fine beautiful green until you take your decorations down in january oh there's nothing like real Oh, I know. Uh, It just looks so much better. It does. I used to live in Virginia, and we'd go to Williamsburg, and you'd see how they decorate with everything, the apples and the pineapples and the real holly and everything. It's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It is definitely gorgeous. That's that's the goal, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Oh, yeah. I love everything real. (laughs) I always say, you know, to have a real tree, you know, in your house, nothing smells like it. Even, you know, if it's a cut tree um, or a bald and burlap tree, even if you do a small one. And, you know, I know some people that keep it out on the porch. They never bring it in the house. They keep their Christmas tree actually out on the porch. And um, it's cold when you're opening gifts. Right. But, but, (laughs) you know, inspirational. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, love it. Yeah, Um, I know. You also talk about edible Yes, um, landscaping, edible which landscaping. is so cool. What a really phenomenal idea. It Talk is. about it that. It really is. And and we find people doing more and more of it. You know, a blueberry plant is a gorgeous plant. You should see them right now. They have a gorgeous fall color. And so you can really make a very interesting landscape using edibles. Um, actually, at the fair this year, that was our theme for our landscape competition, was landscaping with edibles. Oh. And, um, and it was really interesting. You know, some people do a lot of ground cover with strawberries they are great now there are some downfalls the deer love them also Mm -hmm. and so do the squirrels and the chipmunks so we have we have those kind of things to battle but you know there are so many edibles that are so pretty and you know you can train a raspberry or a grape on a trellis and they're gorgeous oh my goodness you know and when the the berries are on them they're just absolutely stunning and then you can step outside and pick them and throw them on your ice cream exactly that is just too cool well how are we supposed to keep the animals away is there a way to keep the animals away when we decide to go this route well there are um there are some great repellents um and they work wonderfully i always like to say um just like us you know um we can something can repel us and then all of a sudden we get used to it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um and then it's not so bad so with repellents for your animals i always say have three three different ones but from three different companies they're going to use different um ingredients So they're going to smell differently. And you use one and wait um, 10, 14 days and use a different one. And then 10 to 14 days and use a different one again. The deer, the rabbit, groundhogs, all of them, they don't get used to one smell because you're always changing it up on them. And they're like, oh, yep, I still don't like that smell. And they stay away a little bit longer. So repelling um, the animals really is a little, um, it's a procedure. Yes. Um, but, um, you know, if you don't want them to eat your landscape up, I mean, the other Go thing is, it. you know, any t- anywhere you live anymore, it, it, you don't have to live in the country to have a deer issue. You can live in the city. Isn't that and, unbelievable and how, it, how right. we've been driving around in Canton? Suddenly a deer is, you see a family of deer walking across the street. Exactly. And you're not far from a shopping plaza. Right. It is amazing. It is. It's crazy. Do you have any brand names that you could uh, let us know as far well, as Well, I love Bonides Repelzol. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great one. Liquid Fence is another one. Um, and then Deer Stop. 
Um, all three of them are really good. Um, also, um, there's some other things that some people don't think about as a repellent. Milorganite fertilizer um, is also wonderful as a deer repellent. They hate the smell of milorganite. So it can act as a two-in-one. If the deer are eating your hostas, um, you can put milorganite as your fertilizer for your hostas down, but it's also going to act as one of your repellents. You know, oh. then three weeks later, you put your new one down. Um, three weeks later, it, by the time you get around to it, it's not going to hurt your plant at all to have an additional fertilization. It's an organic fertilizer also, so you're not going to overload it and burn it. So, you know, so milorganite is a fabulous one. I know tons of golf course owners that use milorganite as repellents, not just as a fertilizer. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And you're killing two birds with one with stone. With one stone. Exactly. While we're repelling the animals, though, we don't want to repel our neighbors. Do they smell bad to humans, you know too? What? They do for usually two or three hours. Okay. Then our senses are not as in tuned as an animal, mm -hmm. so we don't smell it. If we have a heavy rain and some wind, you might get a whiff of it. You know, but on average, it really, you won't smell it after two to three hours, but they can smell it for usually two to three weeks. You know, I'm sitting here taking copious notes and I'm sure someone else listening is doing the well, same. I hope so. You are so full of information. How Thank does you. someone come and have you do a consulting with them? Well, they can just give us a call at the store at 330-455-5997, or they can email me at cindypetiti at gmail.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-P-E-T-I-T-T-I -T -T -I at gmail.com. Um, or they can stop out at the store at 5828 Columbus Road and book it. Um, and then we just um, schedule it, whatever is good for them. Um, I usually do evenings because that works for most people best. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's working. Um, but I do also do them during the day. Um, and I we just book consultation times and I just walk through your landscape with you um, walk through your vegetable garden if that's the type of you know consulting that you need and we talk about your landscape um, how you can change it um, if there's things that you want to keep because it's you know it's a sentimental plant and I know it might not match how can we make this work mm -hmm. and how you can trim to like bring it back to a, a size that is more manageable for you and that would go along with new plants if you were putting those in so there's a lot of things that we can do oh and, do it you will not that. be sorry Bite the bullet and just do right. it and and be ready to just have no ego in it as well. <laughs> you know, it's just sometimes you think, okay, yeah, this looks really bad and we know it and we, we need someone it. else to just affirm that and right. then we'll move forward. We'll move forward, right. You've got some fun events coming up. Well, one as early as October 1st. So, right. uh, tell so us what's I'm happening. I'm really involved with the Stark County Farm Bureau. I'm very proud to be a farmer. Um, but we do a drive it yourself farm tour every year. It's always the first Sunday of October. It runs from uh, 1 p.m. till 6 p.m. And that um, we have the schedule, and I'll tell you where they are. But also, we you can pick up a schedule um, at our store, but they're also on our Facebook page. Uh, the first one is the berry cheese um, on Paris Avenue and we'll be parking at Beach Mennonite Church and then we'll take a hayride down to berry cheese so oh, that's going to be so much fun and then um, Beach Creek Botanical Gardens um, Farm Bureau has been very involved with them uh, we uh, supported and um, helped them build their educational facility so they're going to be on the tour this year which is going to be uh, so much fun and that's on Beach Street with an alliance address and then the new Pegasus facility that is for, called their Military Family Center um, such a needed facility mm -hmm. um, it's just such a blessing um, but that is new for them and we um, decided we would put them on our farm tour this year um, it, there's some horses there but there's not a, it's not a huge farm you know working farm like some of our other farms have been in the past years but this is a great facility and we want the public to see what's there and what's offered, what Pegasus is doing to help our military. Uh, when they come back from, you know, being overseas, if it was six months ago or if it was 60 years ago, um, that we still care about them and we want to help them. Um, not only, you know, support them because we love what they did for us, but, yes. you know, they have emotional issues. They have psychological issues physical issues. We want to be there for them. And Pegasus has stepped up and purchased this farm. And it, it this, this particular farm in Louisville, um, it's on Meese Road. 
is dedicated to um, to our military, mm-hmm. and um, it's called the Military Family Center. Awesome. Um, there's doctors um, from Walsh that will be doing work there. They've partnered up with them, so it's just such a blessing to have them. So we're really excited about you know them being part of the farm tour. It's uh, yeah. it is. There's something very therapeutic, right? Whether or not you ride, sometimes it's just the relationship with the horse exactly. that develops. It's right. very therapeutic. Oh, it is. As is gardening. Gardening right? is. I always say, you know, I do my best praying in the garden. Mm. You know, I can be out weeding and just be like so stressed and I'll get out there in the garden and I'll start weeding and I'm just like, what a wonderful time to talk to Christ. It is just amazing, mm-hmm. you know, and he can like really speak to you at that time and the therapy that you get from that. You know, it is amazing. Look how many uh, parables Jesus used that had to do with planting and sowing and exactly. <laughs> and gardening, I know. I know. basically. Right. Yeah, definitely. I get the feeling that with you, uh, the Garden Center is not just a business. It is a ministry. It is my ministry. I'm so blessed. Talk about I'm that a so little blessed. bit. Um, uh, Twelve years ago, um, my husband was killed in an accident. Yes. And um, I remember when my husband was on his deathbed saying, um, Lord, you know, if you take him, you have got to give me a ministry that I would have never had if he wouldn't have died. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I couldn't understand it because I was so, I was so sure that my husband was going to be healed. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that wasn't God's plan, you know? And so I started out that year, um, finishing up that year, actually. Um, it was around this time of the year when my husband's accident happened. And, um, So I finished out the year saying, Lord, you know, what are you doing? You know, I I, I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. Christmas time came and um, there was a woman that came to the garden center to pick up her Christmas tree. And she was just outraged. She was just hostile and she was cursing and she was just a mess. And I said to her, wait a minute right now. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on with you, but you need prayer. Yeah. And she's like, oh, there... God would never help me. My whole family's going through all this. She had this whole huge story. And I said, you know what? You do. You need to stop talking the way you're talking. And we're going to pray. And you don't have to pray, but I'm going to pray for you. And I prayed with her. And, you know, I never thought another thing about it. Um, The following year, she came back in the spring and said, I owe you an apology. And I said, you know, why? What's I didn't even remember her. And she said, um, well, at Christmas time, I came to get a tree, and I was awful. I was terrible. And you made me stop, and you prayed with me. Mm. And she's like, I don't know what happened that day, but it was like God said to me, you've got to get over this. Wow. I have something for you. And I said, oh, Jesus. Wow. Thank you. Wow. This is my ministry. Yeah. And over the last 12 years, it's amazing the people that come in to our store that have just lost someone. And I would have never known how to talk with them, pray with them. I don't know if I would even had the courage to say, oh, I don't care. It's in the middle of my store and there's 10 customers here. You know what? You need prayer right now. And I'll say to them, you know, if you want to pray with us, we're going to pray over something. If not, I'll be with you in just a minute. Oh, my gosh. And I you know love that. What? <laughs> It has been such a blessing to me. Wow. And I know I just thank God every day for that because I would have never been able to do that. I love my husband immensely, mm-hmm. but I would have never been able to do that if I wouldn't have gone through this. Mm-hmm. And then also nine years later, after my husband, my daughter's husband was killed in an accident. Oh my gosh. And when that happened, I said, oh, Lord, now I really know why I lost my husband. So I would be able to help my daughter through it because... She's going through the same exact thing. She lost him the same way. I had no idea. Drowning in a lake. Oh, my And so, gosh. You, know, you know, we all say when we're going through something, Lord, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? And we are out, we're allowed to ask God inquisitively, just not accusatively, mm-hmm. because he has a plan for us. No matter what, he has a plan for us. And he is so good, and he's so gracious, mm. and he's so merciful. Mm. He will see you through anything. Cindy, I didn't know that it was going to go this direction, but I thank you so much for being (laughs) open to share so openly. Thank you. Um, Cindy Petiti at Anthony Petiti Garden Center, thank you for all you do in our community. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What a blessing. Thanks.